Erev Tov, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live, and thank you guys for joining us this evening here, those of you that are on live stream. And uh, what we are looking at is the justification for sending ground troops into Syria by uh, the NATO and, and of course, or the United States and, and, and her allies, the NATO coalition there. Uh, here, Russia uh, is reporting on TASS, uh, Russian news agency there, France, uh, Charles de, uh, de Gaulle aircraft carrier to join operation in Syria. France is wasting no time uh, on getting a warship in the area there. And uh, the, this is exactly what the article is bringing out here. It says, I am not uh, talking about deterring the ISIS, but all about eliminating it totally. The French president said, adding that France intended to step up its operation against the Islamic forces in Syria. But you know what's really confusing to me is that the problem is not in Syria, the problem is in France. This is where ISIS is now. This is the, uh, the problem that has been created uh, chiefly by the United States. Uh, we also have new evidence now that suggests that uh, Israel has been involved. I've actually reported on this before about ISIS. Those of you that may remember some time back, uh, uh, we did a news broadcast here uh, on Israeli News Live, and one of the things that we actually brought out in that particular report is that um, that speaking with a United Nations uh, Israeli that I knew of that worked for the United Nations, he had actually said to me that they had known and been aware of that some of the ISIS members were actually wearing tzitzit. Now, the tzitzit is the um, the tzitzit is, is what the Jewish men wear, the, the religious Jewish men, on the four corners of their garment there that we see that Moses commands in the Torah. And so, therefore, these men are wearing tzitzit. He says, the ISIS members have been, have been seen wearing these. And, and he said this to me privately, but very concerned about it. Why would Israel be involved with ISIS? Well, you have to keep in mind, the Israeli government also has a purpose for this, and the United States uh, is their ally, and the U.S. really does not have the assets or the means to blend in amongst uh, the, the population of the Arabic world, but the Israeli government does. Their special forces, men, many of the members of the uh, Mossad, are, are even Arabic. They've been recruited, Palestinians. They can blend into these different parts of the regions, and so they pay them to go in and to work undercover and to, to infiltrate and to become part of this system. The United States, Barack Obama, left behind after the uh, Iraq war, left behind a huge cache of equipment, claiming it was too expensive to bring it home, and so just left it behind in order to, of course, arm ISIS. And the whole purpose was, was to topple the Syrian government, to topple that regime there, uh, Basar al-Assad, in order to put in place what they would like to have in there. Uh, and that way it would also benefit for Israel because Israel is still technically at war with Syria over the Golan since the 1967 war. Syria still wants this all back. But, um, of course, these things are all issues that, that are being played out. And, uh, and, and we see, too, the United States, their reasoning to, for being in here, it's not to protect Israel. It is to be able to gain control and access over the rich, uh, rich oil reserves in Syria as well as in Israel as well. Um, of course, um, the two-state solution, all these things, no doubt, have played into it because the Vatican also has a great stake in this, which brings another interesting topic up, and I don't know if I have that that particular uh, article up. Uh, yes, I do. Let me just bring this to your attention as well. This was on the Daily News. Pope Francis calls Paris massacre part of a piecemeal third world war. You actually heard that right. This here is uh, stated here. Pope Francis condemned Friday night's Paris massacre, calling the attacks part of a disorganized world war three. Well, I guess he knows that it needs to be organized. We shouldn't have a disorganized World War III. We need an organized one. But anyway, the Pope says, I am close to the people of France, the families of the victims, and I am praying for all of them. The pontiff said Saturday, according to the Vatican Radio, I am moved at the, and, and I am saddened, and I do not understand these things, uh, uh, these things hard to understand, he states here. France called the wave of terrorist violence that killed at least 129 people, a piece of a piecemeal third world war. 
uh, and said the bloody rampage was not human. Uh, and, and one thing I do agree 100%, what has happened in Paris, France is certainly a tragedy to say the least, especially for the families involved. And my concern is, is I, we've stated already here on Israeli News Live, we do believe that what has happened in this is that ISIS was quote unquote retaliating for France bombing uh, the oil fields there, trying to silence those people that know that, uh, the, of course, the UK, uh, the United States, uh, France, Germany, all of them were the ones actually buying the oil coming out from ISIS. Uh, you got to remember, they're, they're, these guys are actually backed by the U.S. They're backed, uh, as we see here clearly, and you're fixing to see this article in a few minutes, by the uh, Mossad as well of Israel. So there, there was a reason for that. There is a strategic reason for the overthrow of Syria uh, for their government, the regime. I can understand Israel's interest in this because of wanting peace and security uh, on, on their own border as well and not to lose the Golan. But unfortunately, Israel should never trust the United States because the U.S. does not have the Israeli people's interest uh, at heart at all. That is a fact. Uh, but nonetheless, we are seeing uh, an escalation in this. Uh, let, me, let me come back to my thought here real quick with you there. Uh, as I mentioned to you about how the attack that has taken place uh, on uh, France, as I said, as a retaliation uh, on the, the, the country because France was the one that actually bombed uh, in the coalition forces there, bombed the oil uh, rigs in that area because Germany, there is articles out there, we shared that with you before on Israeli News Live about uh, uh, those that are, that are accusing Germany of buying this oil, 15 to $20 a barrel, paying cash for it. France was involved in this and of course they said the U.S. and the U.K. has turned a blind eye. Uh, and even they say Basra al-Assad is involved in it. Now, Russia is well aware of this. They've reported it. Vladimir Putin has reported this as well before that this is happening. And so it appears that France goes in there, bombs uh, the oil factories there, quote unquote, to stop uh, their revenue base. Well, if they quit buying it, they wouldn't have a revenue base either. If there really was sanctions going on like there should be, uh, on ISIS, then uh, Europe would not be getting the cheap oil. And of course, none of the customers in Europe ever got the price uh, cut passed down to them. So I guess it's all for the wealthy billionaires uh, and oil company owners, as well as U.S. billionaire companies owners as well. Uh, of course, John Kerry does have a huge investment in these companies as well. And so therefore, it does benefit him too. Needless to say, though, it is a mess. But what surprised me and we did say that we do believe that it was a retaliation attack by ISIS, but how could such a well-coordinated planned attack by multiple forces and sources of ISIS be carried out in France, in Paris, so rapidly? That's my question. Now, if the Mossad has been involved in helping ISIS fight a war to try to topple Syria, the uh, Basra al-Assad's regime. We know the U.S. has been involved, uh, and it's clearly now that we have the evidence uh, from an article that I'm fixing to share with you in a moment that uh, the Mossad also is involved. That would be understandably so. But this situation of bombing ISIS and ISIS being able to retaliate so rapidly it's such a large scale. I mean, this was like a major military operation. I cannot question, and this is only an opinion. This is not to say it's fact. I do not have facts to back this with. So I'm giving you an op-ed, so to speak, an opinion-based uh, uh, briefing here. I think that there's definitely some forces behind the attack, knowing that the United States is a backer of the ISIS militant group, uh, knowing that they armed them, they may be claiming to fight them and to try to destroy them right now. Uh, but the only one that really seems to be doing any good on that is Russia. But of course, once the United States figures they've used them as much as they can, and it's not doing a whole lot of good, they go ahead and kill them and get rid of them. And who knows? Now they got special forces there to protect some of the ISIS groups. Uh, but anyway, or the so-called backed rebels, Free Syrian Army, that might be. But nonetheless, this has been a very well-coordinated attack. And of course, Paris, France, I don't believe either is um, 
I don't believe that Paris was just targeted for no reason. I believe Paris was targeted intentionally. Because why? It gives uh, the most amount of casualties that would be on a global scale that would help get NATO forces involved in this fight and to justify putting troops on the ground in Syria. Now, we do know President Barack Obama has already stated that it, he's not sending in troops right now. And, and it's funny, he said, why would I want to send in 50,000 soldiers into Syria, ground troops right now? What if something happens with the Yemenis? What if Yemen does something? Do we send 50,000 troops into there? I thought that was kind of odd. Why does he already know the number of troops that he'd be planning on sending? You see, NATO is not happy with the idea that Russia has a base and was able to so quickly put this base into place in Syria to come to Basra al-Assad's aid. Now, again, I say come to Basra al-Assad's aid there. Russia's got their own uh, purpose for being there as well, but clearly they probably have a more noble purpose than what the U.S. has had uh, Israel, I can understand trying to topple Assad to get in a regime that, that would be more cooperative with Israel, uh, that would be more willing to work with, Isra with the Israeli government, so there was a reason for them, no doubt, to be involved in this. But the U.S. is definitely there for the oil as well. And of course, I believe Russia is there for the oil too, no doubt about it. Anyway, though, let me real quick take you to this other uh, story here so that we keep Quit having you on the edge of your seat there. VeteransToday.com uh, uh, is reported in an article here. It says, uh, updated Israeli general captured in Iraq confesses to Israel-ISIS coalition. Uh, there is strong cooperation between Mossad and ISIS. Top military commanders, Israeli advisors helping the organization on laying out a strategic and military plans guiding them in the battlefield. Basically, they are doing like the U.S. has done on many occasions already as well, and that is training the fighters, just like Russia is doing now with, uh, with Basra al-Assad's uh, uh, Syrian army. They are helping to train them and guide them and giving them better weapons in order to defeat ISIS to begin with. So, in essence, then, if this is the case here, that Israel is already uh, working with ISIS to topple Assad, and Russia is fighting ISIS with Assad, it's just like it was before. We have Russia, the United States, and Israel are all at war with one another. We have to face the facts. They're at war. They're just using all the Arabic people to do so. And maybe the whole plot is, is to kill off all the Arabs. I, I really don't know the answer to that there. Uh, I, I, I don't think, though, that Russia has that same sentiment because we see that Russia has alliances with, uh, with uh, Iran, a uh, very hostile nation towards Israel. We see that Russia has uh, many different alliances uh, uh, with, with different countries like, uh, like Iran in the, in the area there too, just like the U.S. has it with Turkey, etc. But for some reason, they all want to kill all the Muslims off uh, and, and get rid of them from, from what it appears to be to me. Uh, anyway, though, the article goes on to state, and this is an editor's note, Israel claims that, that Shahak is only a kernel and requires us to at least publish this claim of theirs. It, it, it may well be Im important to Tel Aviv that a kernel was caught rather than a general. Okay, so we, we, ag we can agree with that. Uh, so that does show that is the Israeli authority has uh, contacted the, the, article, the, the, new, the publisher here and let them know that it was not a general, it was a kernel. Colonel's pretty uh, high up on there. You know, uh, the next rank after colonel is a general. But anyway, uh, General uh, our, our Colonel Sh uh, Shahak was captured by the Shiite mili uh, militia and is still being held in Iraq. His captors are keeping uh, Disai informed, a European security organization with close ties to the VT. That's the, uh, the veterans today. The article below is based on questions we submitted to his captors this morning. We also inquired uh, as to the condition under which he is being held. Uh, this, is, this is what we have right here. It says, European Department, uh, or USA Parliament and Foreign Minister, uh, European Department of Security Information, Secretary General Ambassador Dr. Uh, Hassam Boussed exclusively confirms to VT that the Israeli Brigadier Yussi Alani Shahak, captured by the Iraqi Popular Army, confessed during the investigation that there is a strong cooperation between Mossad and ISIS, top military commanders, 
asserting that there are Israeli advisors helping the organization on laying out strategic and military plans and guiding them in the battlefield. Now, I might just mention to you as well, anytime you get captured, uh, and, and of course they're torturing you, there's no telling what all they can get them to confess to. Whether or not the confession is accurate or not under duress, it's hard to say. Uh, but anyway, this is what they're stating, and I think that should be stated for the record of, of an Israeli uh, um, uh, colonel to begin with. The terrorist organization also has military consultants from Saudi Arabia, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, and Jordan. Saudi Arabia has so far provided ISIS with 30,000 vehicles, while Jordan rendered 4,500 4, vehicles. Qatar and the United Arab Emirates delivered funds for covering ISIS overall expenditure. The planes belonging to the aforesaid Countries are still landing in Mosul Airport, carrying military aid and fighters, especially via the Jordanian border. The parliament and the Desai also confirmed the death of the ISIS leader uh, Abu Bakr Bag uh, Bag Baghdadi, who received two bullets, one to the head and the other to the shoulder. In a fire exchange, two of his top aides were killed as well, and it is believed that the CIA and the Mossad are behind his death as he becomes a wasted commodity. Furthermore, eight ISIS top commanders were killed in Haith in an Iraqi airstrike after two weeks of surveillance by Iraqi military service. The report concluded that ISIS terrorist group recently arrested in Moscow came from Syria and Iraq through Ukraine. The per perpetrators were planning to carry out subversive operations in railways and bus stations. Uh, the bombers are from Chechen, Caucasus, Iraqi, Syrian, and Saudi nationalities. Uh, Ukraine became the hotbed of embracing terrorist activities and complicity with Putin's arch enemies who wanted to break up Russia and then absorb in revenge of, uh, of his uh, military intervention in Syria. You know, these are very, very very serious accusations to say the very very least and uh, and of course as we know that uh, the, the general uh, or the colonel whichever he may be being captured only adds fuel to the fire and it also makes you wonder uh, what is really going on with Russia in this particular case here because Russia certainly has thrown a monkey wrench in there uh, the US was not expecting that I know uh, according to the article right here on the Military Times uh, they spoke about how that when Russia uh, sent their general in, he walked past the, the Marines that were guarding their, uh, the embassy, and he walks right in and says, within the hour, we will be bombing ISIS targets in, uh, in Syria. I'm still, though, amazed at how Russia, we know that Russia was, has always been supplying Assad uh, and his forces with military aid, but how that they were able to go in right under the nose of the United States and NATO uh, and build a military base, an airstrip, with all kinds of uh, uh, high-tech equipment there, and, and, and do it completely unchallenged. This is something that has really surprised me. It makes me wonder as well what the future holds uh, for the region. Uh, it is clear, though, at the rate we're going now, now we're seeing the French forces uh, sending an aircraft carrier in the region. If the United Nations puts troops on the ground, which I believe 100%, is in the making. It will come to pass, whether it's in the next months, whether it's in the next year, or whatever the case may be, it is coming. Russia is not going to sit by, though, while NATO puts forces on the ground and not do something as well themselves. Uh, and the only thing that Russia can do to help uh, in this particular case here is Russia will have to also bring their allies to the table in order to deal uh, with the escalation there, and that would be Iran and China, uh, no doubt. And of course, it'll be interesting to see which side India falls in. I'm sure India basically looks, uh, plays their cards depending on uh, who's going to win the war, because they seem to side a little bit with Russia and a little bit there with uh, the United States. And of course, we've got North Korea, that little rogue nation over there that can just blow up anybody that feels like just because they're crazy and all they got is nuclear warheads to fight with. Um, it is a very serious situation, very tense situation, to say the very least, in the Middle East here. But my biggest concern is, is Israel. Because even like the United States citizens of America, I am an American citizen, and many people like myself have no idea what our government has been doing. Uh, we go along in, in, in what we believe to be the defense of freedom, uh, the freedom that we have in America, but that is rapidly being taken from us. Uh, to go along with the New World Order that the Pope is so cleverly bringing out. 
And, uh, and now the Pope is already asserting that we have got uh, a third world war started, but uh, he basically calls it a clumsy war, if you want to put it for that matter, because I guess he knows it's supposed to be getting underway, but it's just not starting the way it should start. Uh, but they, they're clearly, there's an, there's an initiative that is going on. There's things that are going to come to pass, and they're going to come to fruition. But in the end, these nations are going to ally together and come against Israel. That's biblical, friends. We have no way around that one. That is biblical. It's going to happen. And we can only pray for Israel in a time like this. And by the way, those of you, we, we brought this out in the broadcast the other day. I'll say it for those that have not seen that broadcast there. This Friday, 6 p.m. Israeli time, that's Jerusalem time, which is the same in Israel uh, countrywide. Uh, we will begin a prayer uh, a visual. I, I call it the Esther prayer, the Mor uh, Mordecai prayer time, the three days of fasting and prayer for Israel, for her redemption, for God to raise up the two witnesses to come on the scene for the redemption of Israel and for restoring his word back. I say restoring, and some people I know that kind of troubles them because there's many people that believe in a rapture. I do believe in a rapture myself. Don't think that I don't. Uh, I, I just look at a little bit different time frame. I do believe that the church itself needs to get in line with God's Word. There's too many differences. There's too many people that hate the other because they don't believe what they believe. And so I think this is a time that we need to at least, whether, whether we're here a few days or, or right to the end of their ministry, that's neither here nor there. It does not matter. The point is, is we need to hear what Jesus promised would happen, and that is, Truly, Elias shall first come and restore all things. His bride needs to hear a restoration. That would bring about a unity. Do you realize that, friends? That would bring about a unity of love amongst the believers. It would no longer be he said, she said, that one said. We would actually be able to come together and believe in faith knowing what the restoration of the word is. And there would be nobody else saying, well, you were wrong, I was right, I was right. It doesn't matter. What matters is that our hearts are in line with, with Christ, and we want Israel to recognize their Messiah. Not that we push anything on them. We are just simply asking for God to send his prophets on the scene. Israel's looking for Elijah, so they can be in agreement with that with us as well. They're looking for redemption. Gula, Gula in Hebrew is redemption. They're looking for the redemption of Israel, and we believe that for them as well. Messiah is coming to Israel to reveal himself to them. We believe that it is Yeshua, and Israel believes that it is not, but nonetheless, soon they'll, everybody will know. There'll be no mistake about it whatsoever. They need Elijah as well to come. That door is open for them. Let's come together in prayer. There's been well over 100 people respond just on IsraeliNewsLive.org on the post there about the prayer event. Go in there. If you can pray during these three days, 6 p.m. Jerusalem time, Friday to 6 p.m. Monday Jerusalem time. I think in America that's 11 a.m. Eastern time to 11 a.m. Eastern time Monday, Friday to Monday. Just note in there for us, that, you know, I can pray on whatever day. If you're able to fast, praise God. Some, many people have said they're going to fast the entire time. Some people are only going to fast a little bit or they'll fast a little bit this day, that day, whatever. There's no special time frame. We have so many people that will be praying. We are putting together a calendar for this as well. I'm going to get that calendar up on the website as soon as I can. I first want to update it with all the people that are going to be in there. Your first name, what city you're from. We have people from around the world that are coming together. I'm talking about a very sincere time of prayer. I am also looking to bring together, uh, it'll be 14 messages during those three days that'll be on live stream. I can't say that they'll run on YouTube here uh, because of the time that will be going on. We'll be in prayer, so I don't want to be involved in trying to load on YouTube. But those of you that watch the message on live stream, like those that are watching now, uh, we, we've invited other speakers to come as well. I don't know who all is going to be involved in it as of yet. I've put out several invitations. Uh, I'll be speaking several times myself. We're looking for people that'll speak during this time. 
and you'll be able to watch it on live stream. Uh, we will even try maybe on some of this as well to have music playing on live stream. I can't say that we'll, 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 the entire time we'll broadcast on live stream, but we will be broadcasting every six hour intervals. There'll be special speakers that'll be speaking in those that are in support of Israel that are coming together. And you know, keep in mind, you may differ with who that person is, but if they love the Lord Jesus, if they love Yeshua and believe Him as their Messiah, and, and I say that because I don't know who, who's, gonna, who's willing to speak, but let's show love and unity. This is what we need in this hour that we are in. Uh, there's very prominent people that may be able to come and speak. And when I say prominent, it doesn't make them any better than you are at all. I only say that, in other words, saying that that you'd be someone you may know, and uh, but they love the Lord, and I want people to come. I know Brother Kellen Davison uh, with David Star Magazine. He will be speaking himself. Uh, I've asked Brother Aaron. He may be speaking. Uh, several other people. I'm not sure who all can and when, what their times will be, but they will air on live stream, which also is recorded. You can go back and watch it later there. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for watching this broadcast this evening. Share this with as many people as you can. And again, share the website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Those that want to be in prayer with us, doesn't matter where they're from, what spectrum they are. And even when we're in prayer, during the time you are praying, post comments in there. Sp express your heart. Not, I don't want to take away the time from when you're sincerely praying to God because I want you to have that one-on-one. -on -one. I want you to be in the presence of the Almighty, pleading for Israel, pleading for her deliverance. But any other time outside of the time that you are actually praying and you feel something on your heart, you just want to say to, to the people that are a part of this, or if you want to express it to the Jewish people, your love, post your comment in there and we'll, we'll, we'll upload it as well. We do have it on approved because sometimes people put comments there that do not apply. So it's important we do it on approved, but I am, I'm approving them as fast as I see them come in. And there's over, I think there's like 140 already in there now. God bless you. We love you. Shalom and Herav Tov. I'm Stephen Benun with Israeli News Live.